just shape a storyline, but the very evolution of digital minds. A world where you can form friendships, or even fall in love with beings that exist purely in code, but feel as real as anything. Well, that's happening. Our world is about to change forever. And the epicenter of that change is gonna come from an unexpected place. That's right. You probably heard about AI being used in gaming to create more realistic NPCs or provide in-game guides to help players, but that's just scratching the surface. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about 10 positive and negative ways that this tech is gonna change the world. But to fully understand where this is going, we're gonna to need to go back to where it all began. The concept of NPCs has been around since the earliest days of video games, but their evolution has been nothing short of revolutionary. Let's take a quick journey through time. Released in 1998 by Valve, Half-Life was more than just a groundbreaking first-person shooter. It set new standards for how NPCs and AI characters could interact with players, creating a far more immersive and dynamic gaming experience. Scientists and security guards had their own routines that reacted to the player's actions and even communicated with each other. This level of interaction was unprecedented at the time and almost made the world come to life. One of the most notable advancements was that the AI of the enemy characters, instead of just blindly attacking you, these soldiers were using squad tactics tactics. They took cover. They flanked the player. They communicated with each other to coordinate their attacks, making the combat feel realistic and actually challenging. This was one of the first games where players had to crank down the difficulty level just to get through the damn campaign. Now, this strategic behavior was a game changer. It forced players to think and adapt. Half-Life also excelled in using scripted events to advance the story and develop these NPCs. In other words, these scripted moments made the game feel like a seamless narrative, blurring the lines between gameplay and storytelling, and it set the standard for countless games that followed. Then, in 2004, came Halo 2, which introduced the use of behavior trees for NPC AI. This once again revolutionized how game characters could act and react within the context of the game world. These behavior trees allowed for more sophisticated and flexible decision-making processes, enabling these NPCs to prioritize tasks adapt to changing combat situations, and exhibit more lifelike behaviors. This advancement led to enemies that could dynamically change tactics, such as flanking, seeking cover, or retreating when outmatched. Meanwhile, friendly NPCs also benefited from this technology, showcasing improved cooperation and strategic support of the human player. Fast forward to 2006, along comes Elder Scrolls IV. Oblivion shook things up with their ambitious Radiant AI system. These NPCs now can make decisions based on goals, leading to some extreme realism, but also some unintentionally hilarious situations. Games like GTA V and The Witcher 3 pushed the envelope even further, creating incredibly believable open worlds with these NPCs that followed their own daily routines. But the real game changer came with the integration of machine learning and natural language processing. And that brings us to 2016. The game Event Zero experimented with allowing players to type in conversations with an AI. Little did they know it, but they were hinting at the future of NPC interactions. But all these previous examples have one thing in common. They can only do a limited number of actions. In other words, they're all on rails. Now we're seeing some mind-blowing advancements. Using the same technology behind ChatGPT, you can create these incredibly dynamic NPCs. Do you mind if I sit down here at the table with you? Feel free to join me, Mark. The company of a fellow traveler is always welcome. Because these AI models have seen the entirety of the internet, they possess a great deal of world knowledge, enabling you to have unscripted conversations with these NPCs, complete with voice interactions and facial expressions, such as Convey's demo, which we're gonna jump to in just a second. Now in the future, these minds won't just be trained on texts like ChatGPT is. To make them seem even more human, they'll be trained as embodied beings in a 3D world. Now, as both a creator and a techie, I'm freaking blown away by this approach. Like, AI image and video generators get a ton of hype, but take the world knowledge and creativity of language models, give them the ability to perceive 3D worlds, 
and then take action and respond, and suddenly these NPCs sound less like non-player characters and a lot more like autonomous AI agents. I recently had a chance to experience this tech firsthand in this Unreal Engine demo. The NPC I interacted with didn't just respond to pre-programmed commands. It understood the context of our conversation. It remembered details from earlier interactions and dare I say, even showed a semblance of personality. All right, so we're here in the Convey demo right now. To prep this, I created a custom character. I wrote their backstory, picked out some personality traits, made a few other key decisions about them. Now, let's go chat with them and see how they respond. All right, Xavier, you gotta tell me a little bit more about what has been the craziest mission that you've been on. I know you worked at some three-letter agencies, don't lie to me. Laughs off, player. You're really digging deep, aren't you? All right, I'll give you a little teaser. Let's just say I was involved in a certain extraction. Operation in a certain Eastern European country. It was a real wild card situation. It was uncanny, exciting, and if I'm being honest, kind of unsettling. Now that was Convey, but of course, it's not just startups. All the major game studios are paying attention. Ubisoft's Neo NPCs project is pushing the boundaries of these AI-powered characters that can engage in this type of natural dialogue and react to game environments. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to receive such a top secret, life-altering parcel. I'll go confirm it myself. Excuse me. Can you imagine giving a speech without any sleep? Like imagine playing the next Far Cry or Assassin's Creed and instead of going on your usual side quest, that could be the main stay. That could be the main course, right? Like these conversations would just be so engaging. We're on the brink of creating new forms of intelligence, new types of minds that can think, feel, and grow in ways we can't even imagine yet. So now that we understand where all of this is coming from, Let's dive into how this is gonna change the world. Because these AI characters trained in these interactive game worlds won't stay there forever. They'll eventually escape the matrix and be alongside us in the real world. But it's not gonna be all rainbows and sunshine. Like with any technology, there's both good and bad. So let's start with the five positive predictions. Number one, revolutionizing education. Imagine how much cooler history lessons would be when you can converse with AI versions of historical figures rather than just reading about them. Imagine being there in the audience for MLK's I Have a Dream speech and then being able to talk to him after the fact. Imagine how transformational language learning is gonna get when you can practice with native AI speakers in these immersive environments whenever you want. Number two, enhanced therapy and mental health support. Now this is an area where AI is already having an impact. You can only go see your therapist at a specific time and date. But AI companions can provide you 24 seven emotional support whenever you need it. This could have a huge impact on the global mental health crisis. A lot of people have qualms about going and talking to a human therapist and sharing so much, but people feel a lot better about talking to this chatbot that isn't necessarily gonna judge you. And this is already happening. Take a look at Wobot. This app provides people cognitive behavioral therapy whenever they need it. I mean, it's like having a therapist accessible 24 seven that moment before you're stressed in a meeting, that night when you can't go to sleep. These AI agents are there for you and your mental health whenever you need them. And what's cool is a lot of people have a stigma about talking to therapists and sharing private details. They feel like they'll be judged, but the data actually shows that people feel a lot more willing to talk to these AI chatbots because they know they're not gonna be judged. And thus they're willing to share more, ask realistic questions and follow up on. Number three, digital assistants. We're all gonna have a lifelong mentor, a business advisor and virtual assistant all rolled into one. Basically, imagine your own personal AI Jarvis helping you with day-to-day -day tasks, getting stuff done in the real world. And think about it, you already have the primitives in your house, you already have cameras, you probably have some sort of Amazon Alexa or Google Home or Apple HomePod. These voice assistants will work in concert with the cameras and your computer, essentially giving your AI assistants the ability to understand the context of what you're doing and where you're doing it. So when you're done with your work emails and you walk up to the kitchen, your iPad will automatically turn on and pull up those recipes so you can start cooking breakfast. It'll be contextual, almost like preempting what you need and being right there to give it to you. It's like an amazing butler that's preempting every need that you have and is just one step ahead, helping you get stuff done in the real world. Number four, and this is obvious, 
but content creation and game development. Now, obviously game development is gonna get so much more accessible with AI handling all these complex character interactions, which means that smaller teams could rival the output of AAA studios, creating these vast living worlds that are brimming with life. But it's not just gaming, it's also content creation. If you look at what ChatGPT is doing with the advanced voice feature, imagine embodying that caliber of AI agent into a 3D avatar. Put a couple of them together in a 3D scene and you would legitimately be like the director on set, giving your talent instructions in natural voice and capturing the best takes in your virtual studio. I truly think this is gonna make virtual production accessible to a whole new class of creators. For example, take a look at this demo and see how this person's guiding the AI chatbot to change its voice, even introduce sound effects so it sounds like it's a pilot delivering something through the airplane speakers. Um, hey, what's up? Well, howdy there, partner. Not much. Just ridden the waves of right and cracking it once. How about you? Number five, role playing. Now there are so many situations where people have social anxiety or they have some sort of medical condition where they wanna be able to practice interactions in these safe AI driven environments before they go apply these skills in the real world. Now Mark Zuckerberg has mentioned that one of the most popular use cases for Llama, their AI chatbot is exactly this, role playing. Wanna game through how you're gonna ask your boss for a raise? Well, you can do that. Wanna figure out how you're gonna go approach your crush at that coffee shop? You can do that too. Want to prepare for that super difficult technical job interview? You can prepare that as well. So the ability to construct these role-playing scenarios on the fly is super powerful and useful. Whether you have social anxiety or autism, this is gonna be huge for a lot of people. All right, now it's time for the negatives. Number one, addiction to virtual relationships. As these AI companions become even more sophisticated, some people might prefer these relationships in the digital world to physical relationships with humans, potentially leading to social isolation. I mean, we're already in our social media bubbles, only consuming the kind of content that we like, talking to the kind of people that we like. This would take isolationism to the limit. We'd be in our singular isolated bubble with AI populating everything else that we interact with. Now where AI NPCs could offer companionship, let's say to elderly people to help combat loneliness and provide that cognitive stimulation that they're lacking, it could be a whole different story if we're talking about young users like Gen Z, Gen Alpha kids that might elect to have a relationship with an AI versus a real person. Case in point, there's an app called Character AI, which basically allows you to talk to any virtual character, create your own virtual character, and then get into phone calls with them, literally having a FaceTime audio conversation. And this app is number eight on the App Store for the entertainment category. That's ahead of Disney Plus and HBO Max. There's a lot more of these waifu apps on the App Store. Some of them are coming from China, some of them are like startups, but needless to say, this trend shows no signs of stopping. Now, as Elon likes to say, a population collapse is probably the biggest threat facing the world as we know it. So this technology could not be coming at a worse time. And now combine this stuff with VR, I don't even wanna think about how addicting this could be. Now, relatedly, number two, privacy concerns. Now, just think about all these AI NPCs, they're gonna be collecting vast amounts of personal data through these interactions. Now, think about it on social networks like TikTok, you can already build a very intimate understanding of you, literally reverse engineering your soul based on your likes, dislike, literally how long you spent dwelling on a video before you decided to scroll. This stuff takes it to a whole nother level because it's not just one directional. These AI chatbots can tell test how you respond to different stimuli. In a world where you think you're prompting the AI, the AI might be prompting you to infer a lot more about you and build a far more detailed profile. It's a big question on how this data will be protected and used, especially if you connect it with all the other devices in the context of your digital existence. Like literally these AI systems will be mediating all your interactions on the digital world. So just like you have to be careful about which virtual assistant you give your email and calendar access to, you're gonna have to think similarly about the stuff you share with these chatbots. Because like, unlike human, these chatbots have photographic memory. Number three, reality distortion. I mean, frequent interactions with these 
idealized AI characters that do exactly what you want and respond to you exactly how you'd like to be perceived could skew a lot of perceptions of real world relationships and even social norms. People dunk on social VR apps like VRChat all the time. It's like, oh, you don't know who you're talking to. You might get catfished, but at least there's a human being on the other end of that VR headset. Now imagine a world where you literally cannot tell if it's AI or not. If we think social media is bad right now, imagine a generation of people living in that isolated bubble, even smaller than our echo chambers today. Number four, job displacement. I think this is probably the fear everyone has about AI, but I don't think people realize how many aspects of life AI is gonna proliferate. As these NPCs become even more sophisticated, they could legitimately replace a ton of human roles in customer service, entertainment. We've talked about therapy already. I mean, tons of customer service applications. Already, if you look at some of these banks and the pilots that they're running, they're finding that customers are more likely to ask those questions that you wouldn't have otherwise because they feel judged by those humans, right? I mean, you don't wanna ask a real banker what APR means because you're afraid of coming off as a dumbass. But in this case, people feel very okay asking stupid questions to these AI chatbots. So next time you ask for a bank loan, you might not be talking to a human, but an AI instead. Next time you're doing an interview, you might be interviewing with an AI, not a human being. And also, it's not wild to imagine walking into a hotel lobby in the near future only to find an AI avatar on an iPad checking you in. And number five, ethical quandaries. And let me tell you, there are a lot of them. Because if these AI NPCs become indistinguishable from humans and their behavior and cognition, we'll face challenging questions about consciousness, rights, and the very nature of intelligence. Now, of course, science fiction has explored this deeply, but even in recent history, ex-Google engineer Blake Lemoyne felt that Lambda, a text-based chatbot, was sentient and advocated for its having rights. Now imagine a generation of kids who grow up with their best friend as an AI, this AI that knows everything about them, that is inextricably connected to their daily lives. Do you think they'll advocate for AI rights? I think they will. And as we delegate more and more authority, capability, and even agency to these AI characters, we're gonna push up hard against these type of ethical questions. The question isn't whether this future is coming. It's already here. I mean, we just talked about character AI being number eight on the app store in the entertainment category. That blows my mind. So the real question is, are we ready for it? Are we prepared for the ethical, emotional, and really existential challenges that come with creating these new forms of intelligence? As we stand on this precipice, looking out at a future that is both thrilling and terrifying, I can't help but wonder, what role will you play in shaping this new reality? Because make no mistake, every one of us, gamers, developers, policymakers, just citizens, we're all a part of this journey. We're all architects of this brave new world. So as we wrap up, I want you to think about this. What kind of world do you want to create? What kind of relationship do you want to have with these digital minds of the future? Are we gonna be orchestrating these minds or are these minds gonna be orchestrating us?